many of you to VCM, welcome to this new video. It's part two in a series of three covering the Sukhoi Duvatsit Bed Grach, better off known as the Su-25 Frogfoot in NATO parlance. Anyways, this relatively new kit from Zvezda. Let's see how it builds up. This second video just really covers up the building and we'll have the next one covering the painting and weathering. So my original intentions were to build up every single kit part and compare them with the aftermarket. Check out video one where you'll see all the aftermarket that I did purchase that is designed for this kit. In this example, I decided to build up the ejector seat just to show you guys what it does look like when it's built up. And actually it's not too bad at all. There you are compared to the resin kit, the resin one that I will use uh, as we go forward. But uh, you know, Kit supplied stuff is pretty good. Now that cannot be said for the cockpit. The cockpit is bare panels. The entire detail being provided just by decals. But uh, as you're gonna see in a minute, we can improve on that significantly. And this may have been my first mistake, but we'll come back to that later on. Okay, uh, we're gonna use uh, a mixture of those two colors. And the idea here was to try and make up a custom mix to sort of match the uh, cockpit instrument panels that are provided courtesy of Quinta Studio. These 3D decals really, really add a lot. Look at the excellent detail that's uh, provided by them. They are really easy to use as well. Dip them in water just for a few seconds. And then just like a normal water transfer decal, they slip off the backing sheet. Now there's a couple of ways that you can apply them. In this instance, I used white glue, school glue, PVA glue. I find it, uh, this is recommended by Quinter. It allows you plenty of time to position the uh, decals into place and the cleanup as well is really, really easy as well. Now there are other methods uh, using super glue as well. We'll probably cover a bit of that later on in the final video, just to add those other little tiny details. But uh, the uh, supplied kit that I used is the smaller one. It does have some sidewall detail. There is a larger one, it's got a lot more stuff. But as you can see, this really, really brings that cockpit to life. Now we did uh, use some of the uh, green paint as well the interior green a Russian interior green actually just to spray within the gear bay areas and also we painted within the intake ducting now here's the 3d landing gear or 3d printed landing gear it's resin it's got lots of these tree structures that support it and the first battle you have to fight is removing it from this structure just take your time. It is pretty straightforward. But I did find that the actual composition of the detail made these structures really, really delicate. The cleanup was not easy. There were so many little sprue attachment points. Now we have got quite a lot of resin aftermarket and I find it, you know, basically like an insurance policy to use a good primer. So at this stage, I took all of the resin goodies, well, most of them anyways, and started to get them ready for a primer. And as usual, I got to my sort of favorite, Mr. Hobby, finishing surface of black or brown or whatever you have anyways. It's a pretty good primer paint. We're gonna come back to some of these details in the final video of the series but at this stage I had to paint up some of these parts you know the usual sort of process with aircraft you have to do bits and pieces of painting as you go through the assembly steps and we're adding some further details to the cowling this is the HUD detail. I don't know what you call it, the light for it or whatever. And also there's a sort of like upfront controller that goes on that uh, front plate. 
just apply, applied some dark wash here just to sort of pop some of these details really because of the amount of detail rendered by the quinter decals uh, there really wasn't too much to do here anyways and also that back wall as you'll see later on when we have the ejector seat in place there's not that much to see now this cockpit tub it fits onto the floor of the front landing gear and then it's time to assemble the fuselage halves this join is really quite easy straightforward to do but at the same time as well we start building up the side trunking for those engines now this is my usual sort of cleanup technique I tend to try and squeeze the parts together quite firmly to get some of that uh, melted plastic to ooze out of the seams. Use a ceramic blade there to clean up initially and then just go through various grades of sandpaper, eventually polishing the surface, leading to a seamless finish. Now this is the uh, underneath sort of plate of the fuselage. This again fits really, really well. But at this stage, I was test fitting all the other components that make up the trunking for the engines because there's about four or five parts. And you can see there, I already knew that I was going to have a few little problems when it came to that assembly step. I'm just applying some wash, just some of those turbine faces there and on the compressor. These are pretty deep in, so you don't really see them that well, but uh, better to be safe rather than sorry. And because of the way that this kit is made, you have to commit to fixing the landing gear quite earlier on. I found it easier to paint everything prior to that fixing them into position, using a gray paint here to give it the uh, overall sort of base color. And you can see there's one of my casualties. I did snap one of the landing gear. It was quite an easy repair just using some super glue. And because I've got this trunk in place, now it's time to paint up the main landing gear bays using that green. But these are pretty deep. You're going to see anyways, once that's all done, there's a very small aperture. Did mask off the fod guard for the front landing gear. And that got painted in that uh, Russian green again. And because we've got all this nice detail, on the landing gear it definitely needs to be picked out and painted so we used a black brown paint to hand paint all of the cables and brake lines on that gear and also i decided to apply the wash at this stage as well just getting this landing gear basically complete so i wouldn't really have to come back to it later on And a little bit of wash inside these gear bays. And there you can see I had to use quite a bit of super glue to fix them in position. That was more a security measure. They did have dedicated location points. Now, to get the front landing gear, I had to sort of thread it through the front portion of uh, the recess for the front gear bay door. That was uh, not that tricky, but let's just say awkward. And then we're going to join on the trunking that makes up the engine nacelles. Now, it does look like I use quite a lot of putty here. I'm going to put that down to myself. I think I could have done better with the assembly here. And also, you'll see, once we do polish it up, um, there's not really that much putty uh, involved in it. Would say, I mean, it would be great to have slide molded nacelles that you just simply clicked on a place, but this is not an expensive kit. It is made of lots of parts, so you just need to deal with some of these seams, but they aren't too bad in all honesty. Just putting the scribing in the detail again. and the wings very very straightforward i added in most of the pylons at this stage as well i just wanted to say it was just easier for me to align them 
and this one I did admit this is an aftermarket bomb rack that we'll deal with in the final video and also I decided to build up some of the stores as well these large fuel tanks being a distinctive feature of these Su-25s as uh, maybe you as some of you may well know uh, Soviet Russian aircraft don't tend to carry many external tanks but this one does Now this is really pleasing. This is the wing join and a bit of a cliche here, it does snap into place. The join here is excellent. All that was required was to just run some liquid cement down the seam there or the join line. And as you can see, there's quite a lot of like raised rivet detail and that's pretty good thing. Actually, it's a really excellent thing that the fact that the wings really fit so, so well means that you don't need to do any sanding here. There's no need to remove any of that, uh, you know, rivet detail that you really do want to retain. Be careful with the empennage, rear tail plane. They are handed. They will form an upwards V if they're fitted correctly. Check the instructions carefully. There is a subtle difference between them. And there we are. Fitting on the elevators now. They snap into place, basically, and just need just a little tiny drop of glue just on those contact points there where the hinges are. And the rudder itself is made out of four or five components, I think. And what I found here was best to just drive fit them all into position initially just checking that they fit and once they're all aligned then just a light touch of glue just to finally secure them and then the final part was glued in position the the top of that maybe a future version coming we don't know adding a few of the details now landing lights go on And I decided to detail the front nose cone, which seems to have some sort of laser rangefinder. Use some red tinsel type or foil, I think it was, or some confetti. And the final aftermarket detail added at this stage is some of these flight data probes. I added the supplied ones. They actually are not too bad, to be honest. They're definitely usable. Uh, and I glued them onto position just to make sure that there wouldn't be any gaps once I got to fixing on these uh, metal ones now to drill into the fuselage uh, not a difficult operation but i did unfortunately let the drill skip around a bit and i had to do a bit of patching up there found it a good idea to apply a bit of liquid glue in prior to fitting the uh, pitots into position and that way you can sort of melt them and get a really really good fit there and there you can see just like a little bit of the damage that i did with the drill now here I'm just sort of aligning them and then finally we can sort of disassemble them as well. The idea of course is to fix them in place when the model is you know a little bit further on they are a real magnet for damage. Just drilling out the uh, this part of the sensor here you can see how this fits on the front part of that probe. And we also attach the front part of the canopy. Doesn't fit too well, but the plastic is flexible. Flex it in a position. I glue on one side and then hold it on, and you will get a really, really good fit with that uh, with that um, canopy section. Decided to add on a little bit of sill detail here using some plastic card. This is just really to my taste. I suppose the part of the back the strip that I use at the back was probably the most useful part because it did cover a small seam there and I think I could have done a little bit better here it would have been much better to use a little bit of wire some thin wire to create the uh, impression of a seal there but I used the thinner piece of plastic guard and there we are so this is basically as far as I could get in terms of construction. If you guys have any questions for me, please leave them down below and I'll try and help you out. I'm just blending in the canopy there. I'll just give you a quick overall look at the completed construction phase. 
So I hope you enjoyed this build. Hope it was useful to you. And we'll see you in the next one where we do the painting and weathering. So as always, thanks to you for watching and thank you especially to my patrons for supporting the channel. <laughs>